I'm pretty sure it's not approved by the FDA, but it is the cheapest way I know how to do it. It doesn't take any special equipment and I've been doing it for almost 16 years. So I'm gonna show you how I freeze meat. Hey there, Brittany Flammer with videos here about budgeting and money saving tips. If I would love to know, do you freeze your own meat? If so, what kinds of meats do you freeze? Let me know in the comments down below. This freezing method works with pretty much any meat. Today I'm gonna show you with chicken, pork roast, and hamburger. What I love about this freezing method is it doesn't take much equipment. Here's what I use. I use the gallon freezer Ziploc bags. So I make sure the gallon one is freezer size. And then I use regular sandwich baggies. I do not buy the freezer kind. The freezer kind is more expensive and the way I do it, I don't need the freezer. I just use the regular. These aren't even Ziploc. These are great value. Um, I found the cheapest place to buy these is Sam's when they're on rebate or else on Amazon. First of all, we need to go ahead and prepare the meat. So for chicken, this means we need to cut off the fat. Now I like to do this all at once, get all the nasty, dirty work done all at once. Go through and cut off all of the chicken, all, all of the fat that I can find and easily get to. I prefer to use kitchen scissors. If you don't have any, a good knife works too. But I go ahead, get off all the fat that I can, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna cut up the chicken into the size pieces that I wanna freeze. Now, there's no right or wrong to what size you want to freeze. I like to freeze them in the amounts I'm going to use for a meal. So most recipes seem to call for about a pound of chicken. I usually use less than this. I usually use half to three quarters of a pound for our entire family. So I like to freeze them in about half a pound sizes. So if it's a really large chicken breast, I might cut it in half or cut it into thirds. If they're small, I might use a whole one. Just whatever you will use for a typical meal is how I like to freeze it. For the hamburger and the roast and other meats, we can skip cutting up the fats and I will just divide them up evenly. Now for the roast, our family use our family eats the roast as a roast. We do potato, roast potatoes and carrots once a month. So I like to freeze them larger, usually in like two, two pounds at a time. So I just eyeball it, cut it into four or five sections evenly. Same with hamburger. You can use a scale if you prefer to be more exact. I just eyeball it. Once the meat is prepped, the fat's cut off, they're all divided equally, then I grab the sandwich size Ziploc bags. I will simply put the meat into this bag and I will do one serving per bag. So that means when I freeze it, I can just grab one of these and that's enough meat for one meal. So I put the chicken, the hamburger, whatever meat I'm doing, I put it inside the Ziploc bag. After I've got all of the meat inside the bags and they're all relatively even, then I will go through and try to lay them as flat as possible. Tip, don't forget to open up the bags before you start cutting the meat so you don't have to do one-handed. Now, if you have a straw, now is a great time to suck out the air with a straw. Make sure you don't suck out any of the hamburger because that's gross, I have done that before. Just be careful, I don't have straws on hand today so I'm not gonna do it with a straw. If I have them, I'll use one just to get out as much air as possible to help prevent freezer burn. But once I've got all the meat in there, I lay them flat, as flat as I possibly can. Then I will seal them up. I've gotten as much air as I can. Then I'm going to stack them inside my gallon freezer bags. I will fit as many as I can, as flat as possible inside the gallon bags. Once I've got all of the meat inside the gallon freezer bag, then I will seal the gallon freezer bag. So all of the meat is double bagged. It's inside that first bag, which isn't even a freezer bag, so it's not very expensive. And then it's set inside the gallon freezer bag. This is, you can see all the freezer burn. This is what happens if you just freeze it in one, even if it's a freezer. So this is why I like to double it. And then I will place them in my freezer and I will mark on my freezer inventory what I just put in. FDA has charts and guidelines on how long you should freeze your meat for. It varies depending on where you put it, what kind of freezer you have, but typically it's three to six months. However, let me know in the comments down below if you have ever found something that's old. Let me know how old you have found something in your freezer because I have found stuff from a couple, like from years, years past, and we've still eaten it and it's been fine. Okay. So I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm just saying three to six months is what they recommend, but I have done it. I have eaten meat much older than that and we have survived. And when I'm ready to eat or to prepare the food, I will go and I just grab one thing of meat and I know I've got enough for a meal. If I have the hamburger or whatever meat laid flat, it does not take nearly as long to thaw. So when I pull out the meat, I will grab that smaller sandwich size bag and I throw that bag away. It's not worth it to clean up for me, but then the 
the gallon size, the larger freezer one, it doesn't have any actual meat touching it, so I reuse that one again and again and again. Make sure you check out my playlist right down here, 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 here. There will be a playlist somewhere on the screen with videos all about money saving tips, simple, quick, easy tips you can use to save money every day in your life. And thanks.